Hey lovers, thanks so much for coming by. I have an exclusive with Leso, and we're not going to waste any time because sharing her journey is going to take us the entire hour, and we are excited about that. So while I get ready to share for everyone to join on all the different platforms, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and then go okay. right into the introduction about where you're from and, and city and state and that kind of thing about your younger oh, life. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you for having me and just creating a platform for artists, especially like black women and people of color artists to share space, share themselves, share their talents, share their creativity. You know, that is a thank big you. thing, D. And thank I appreciate you. you so much and what you're thank doing you, for the community. Thank and, you, um, Queen. I appreciate that. And yeah. as we know, Denver has a lot of talent. And as yeah. um, soon as this pandemic is over, I'll come check you guys out. I bet I'm yes. a lot of artists, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, honestly, like before the intros, I feel like the pandemic has been giving us this space of just learning, right? And rebranding ourselves and finding different outlets of how to be an artist and how to exactly. speak that voice. So I, I feel exactly. like it's been such a learning experience for me. For I, this think year. So. I think I've learned a lot. You know, I know I can yeah. continue to grow and there's so much more that I, I can get out of where we're going. You know, we have a lot of plans, but I yeah. feel like I've learned a lot in this short pandemic, right? Like, Me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I'm going to start well, sharing on the platform and you tell everyone where you're from. Yes, my name is Lay Soul. I am from Brooklyn, New York, Bed-Stuy to be exact. I am a poet, CEO, artist, creative. I love interacting with new people. I'm a traveler. I used to yes. curate open mics and art shows in New York City and Philadelphia. And I'm looking to bring a Black space to Denver. And that's my mission. As well as doing community work. I do a lot of like community work, social services, giving back, helping the homeless, helping the disenfranchised. As an artist, I feel like our mission of art is to be impactful and inspirational and leave a message before we die. And that's bigger than yeah. just, you know, speaking our voice, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's- And you're it's, doing it's, that. You have been doing that. You came um, not too long ago to Denver. Is that correct? Yes. I moved here in May. In yeah. May. How do you like yeah. it? How do you I like love the it. mile high? <laughs> I, I love the mile high. <laughs> it's <laughs> It's an adjustment being an East Coast girl, but at the same time, it's beautiful. You know, people yeah. are different. The environment is so naturesque. There's so many yeah. opportunities out here. And I feel like putting myself in a space where I don't know anybody and yeah. it's uncomfortable, it helps me grow. You know what I'm saying? Because I get yeah. to dive deep and learn about myself and learn about different aspects of myself and, and where do I want to go with myself? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I hold myself at, at a higher regard, just yeah. being on this journey and experiencing it. So I definitely feel like the energy pulled you here and you landed yeah. in, in that, like, this is the perfect place for you. Um, the art, right. what do you think about the arts in Denver? I, I love the arts in Denver. I do feel like there's, I wouldn't say they're still growing. It, it's, it, it is still growing, right? I but agree. it's growing mm -hmm. in such a, a positive way. And where I'm from, art is part of our personality. Art is the walk. Yeah. You see art everywhere in fashion, the way people talk, in the food, in the culture, even graffiti on the subway. So I feel like I within the that. next few years, Denver is going to be that mecca of art. I feel like Denver is going to be like Amsterdam for the U.S. I you know feel that. I'm, I, I'm with you yeah, on that. I absolutely vibe. agree. That's a good analogy because I do yeah. agree. It's that vibe that you feel when here. Yeah. I've been uh, about um, two and a half years here. So Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of yeah. like people that are not from Colorado that are uprooting themselves here and That's creating right. their own space here. And being a New Yorker, I'm so used to that. Most of my homies are not from New York. You know, I met my partner right, in New York. Right. He's from New Orleans. So, you know, like difference and, and that melting pot of culture and diversity helps make a community. It helps inspire others, you know, and helps teach the youth what to look up to. 
So I absolutely I agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Welcome, Black in Denver group. We just added you to the Black in Denver. Um, I yes. believe that's where I came across to you, and I think it yes. was definitely meant to be. Yeah. Yes. It was. Yeah. This whole yeah. this whole experience in in Colorado has been like amazing so far. You know, Absolutely. a lot of people up for me, and I'm I'm super appreciative of the opportunities and just the people I've been meeting out here. Yeah, I am too, and I like that we can be whatever we want to be here. Like, there's right. just, you know, yeah, you just can walk down the street. Yeah, you know, um, some of us do it in a decent way, some of us don't, and it still doesn't bother anybody. It's, I'm it's from however you want to express and, yourself. You know? Exactly. Just be, be true so to being, yourself. Though. Yeah. yeah, you could be free. You could just express yourself, sing in the middle of the street if you want to. Right. So, yeah, right. I love that. I love it too. All right, so I want you to describe yourself to the viewers in a hashtag. <laughs> so <laughs> I put my hashtag as my brand forever so live, forever in tune with my moral principles and values while giving soul and culture wherever I go and live in vitality, vitality, love, education, and knowledge. So forever, forever so alive. Forever so alive. I think that fits you perfectly. Thank That's you. your hashtag. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And tell me, like, so what's one thing people do not know about you? Uh, like, I come from a family of artists. Like, my okay. brothers are rappers and writers. My dad was a DJ in Jamaica, and he was also an art curator when he moved to the States. My mom is really crafty with like her hands and a cook and all these different things. So having, you know, all of these different values and talents in a household, you know, you're you're bound to explore different layers of yourself. And I've always exactly. been into the arts. I've always liked being expressive. I've always been different. Um, yeah. I never knew how to express that those differences within myself. However, right. just you know, embracing where I came from, it just helped me become the woman that I'm becoming, you know? And they, they created you. So mom's creative yeah. and dad, you know, dad has his, and the Jamaican roots already. So you were yeah. just born with the gift, you know? So absolutely. Yes. I love that you see art in everything. Yeah, you that's, have that's to. That's my first right? guess to really say it like that. There's you really do, yeah. Them. So yeah. you, you have to see art and everything. Like my fondest yeah. memories growing up was just listening to Bob Marley. You know, I was my saying, and my dad used to just play like music videos. He never just yeah. used to play some, just videos, and he wanted yeah. us to see the stories of different just black folks speaking their pain or speaking their truth or speaking rhythm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was bigger than just dancing and, and just knowing the words, but it was you feeling that emotion, you feeling that passion. So you have to look for beauty and everything, you know, because you're gonna give up if you don't, honestly. And I can hear that and feel that when I'm listening to you over on Tidal, I feel, I just played it just now while I was doing the whole wig makeup life. So I love it. I feel it. I can feel, <laughs> Thank it, from, you. <laughs> I can feel it from your roots. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate yes. that. So what's one thing that people, uh, we already asked. So um, your wake up ritual, tell us about how you wake up, especially on a snow day. <laughs> okay. This morning. <laughs> Okay, so my wake up ritual is the same. I've been doing this routine for about three years now, and now I'm perfecting it. So every day I wake up, I drink water, I say affirmations. So I have a vision board. And before the start of every year, I rewrite my goals, just affirmations that, you know, I want to accomplish, how I want to feel about myself, how I want to process my emotions, how I want to interact with other people. And I literally say these things every day. So I have like a 20, 30 minute routine before I even get ready for work or whatever I want to do, you know, drink water, save those affirmations and positive mantras to start. I stretch. I thank myself, the universe, whatever you believe in for just waking up and right. being, you know right. what I'm saying? I have breakfast and I begin and just getting in that okay. space of. I guess just relaxation. I'm giving myself that peace because you have to create peace within yourself. I used to exactly. always have the routine of, and I still have that routine in the sense of checking my phone. But before I used to get really wrapped into the energy on my phone, really wrapped into social yeah. media or mm -hmm. whatever anybody else is talking to me or wanting to explain to me or whatever. And sometimes 
you have to give it to yourself before others give it to you. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I do. I've been I doing do. this for a while. Yeah. 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 Like you're, so. you're going to start out, especially um, being black in Denver. And I can't stress that yeah. enough. I think that you understand where I'm coming from. So yeah, you really have to do that before stepping out into the streets of yeah. the Tri County area. We have to do that anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because like black people are the only race of people that can die for just being the race they are. You know, I'm saying I can wake up and walk outside and, and die for being black. So I gotta process yeah, my right. power before I, I like step outside and want to help people or want people to pay me for services or want to speak my truth. And then especially when you're not in an environment where you have people like my safe space is my home. Right. But right. I don't have like that fallback. And there's a lot of black folks that I've met out here that don't have that, that fallback that they can go to. So you have to no, know your once we move in, out of our environment, you that's, know? What, that's the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. can't expect yeah. for people to protect you. You have to protect yourself. And, and that even starts by just being, being nice to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like taking care taking of your stuff. mental. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Writing yeah. things down, talking to people, you know, like, being okay with not being okay, but embracing not being okay. Like it's that just, time. it's just level, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think I, I've learned like, you know, so much by being in solitude within the pandemic. Like I, I've been like really embracing, yeah. embracing yeah. this time of just like. By yourself. I mean myself. it. I mean and, it. I mean learning. it. Yeah, yeah. Learning. I'm only in control of myself. So. Yeah. I, that yeah. quiet that the pandemic brought, you know, people are cursing 2020 and I don't think I can curse 2020. Um, it's, it's been a lot of growth. <laughs> it's been a lot of growth. I, my, my 2020 for me was 2017. Like I lost my dad that year. Right. Um, okay. I, I lost like a teaching job that was after years. You know what I'm saying? I lost my right. apartment. I, I right. thought like, I was in a relationship that I thought was great, but it wasn't. It was really toxic for me. So right. it was so many things in my personal life. My foundation was crumbling and I had to like really rebuild everything. Right. So now at this place of strength where I, I already learned certain life values, going through 2020 was cakewalk. You know, <laughs> that part, like when you've been through, you're like, I've been through, it. I've been through being okay. depressed, mm -hmm. been through mm -hmm. not having it. I've been through going to eviction court while grieving for a parent. I've been through all of it. So you can't take anything away from me that I haven't dealt with. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about just making sure that I'm, I'm great mentally to deal with the things that we're going to go through every day. Cause we're always going to go through something, you know what I'm saying? We're That's always going right. to go through something. But there's always yeah. expect the unexpected because there's always right. going to be something there. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. And um, I want to move on, Laisol, to describe um, your workout diet. We already mm -hmm. talked pretty much kind of got that in your meditation um, lifestyle. Yeah. But um, what what do you can tell us about how you eat and how you move around? I'm I'm a pescatarian, so oh. the only meat I consume is fish, and I eat a lot of like. Uh, plant-based proteins, vegetables, grains, pastas. I try to include a lot of fruits and veggies into my diet, um, drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. uh, I try my best not to drink anything too overly processed. Um, you can only do so much though. Right, uh, I, it's a journey, it's a journey. <laughs> it's yeah. a journey, you know, yeah. and in the world we live in, most things are animal-based or use some kind of form of animal product. You know what I'm saying? Most mm -hmm. things are processed. We we live in a very processed country, you know. Right. What I'm saying fast services right. is a part of our charm. So it's in unless everything. you your own mm -hmm. shit, you gotta deal with what what you get. But just take right. care of yourself, you know. Um, I do yoga every day. I stretch. Um, I do. I study Qigong and Reiki. So okay. I do like healing, like healing breathing, healing movement. You know what I'm okay. saying? Just to keep myself calm. And I'm a walker. Like that's, that's such right. a New York thing. I love walking. Right. I can walk anywhere. And I walk every day. I lift things. I just try to be active and move yeah. my body. You know. You find that in common with Denver and New York? The healthy, the walking, the moving? Uh yes and no. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. in New York, I find that in a sense, it, it's kind of even because 
All right, so New York, most people don't drive. You know what I'm saying? So you mm -hmm. have to walk or you take an Uber or whatever. But most people are used to walking, having bikes, being on scooters, being on skateboards. So they're active. You know what I'm saying? So right. mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are thick, slim, all different kind of variations, whether you're big, chunky, whatever. You know how to move. Because right. you don't have, you understand exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I meet people in Colorado, especially straight Coloradans, you know, that yes. they move high. They literally yeah. move high. They move yeah. tired. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they move like they don't have a care. Like I, yeah. I see a lot of people. I see extreme obesity here compared to New York. And I've seen obese people. I've been obese. I, I've been over 300 pounds, you know what I'm saying? But right, I've exactly. seen extremely obese people. And I feel like that's the the like seesaw with living in a legal state where, mm, you know- you The munchies. That, yeah, you, have, right. <laughs> you know, that you have to be able to get whatever kind of high you want. Right. Cause you know, weed is not the only high some of these it folks are It's not the only high that's right. around here, yeah. You know, yeah. but then at the same time, like people do get a high from food and there's a lot of food places out here that promote bullshit, like food culture in New York. Like I can go and go to a vegan restaurant and the straight vegan food, you know what I'm right. saying? It's so hard shopping healthy out here because they promote meat, they promote fried shit, they promote good stuff, but it's all like smuggling and, and it's cheap. A, um, um, it's a foodie it's land, but not so necessarily. Um, no, it's they not do eat healthier food. here by the majority of the people. But yeah, I'm I'm over DTC area, Greenwood Village. How how okay. what side are you on? I'm by Green Valley Ranch by the airport. So I have okay. a, a mix. Mm -hmm. I have a mix of people. I have like people that are like super healthy over here that like right, to jog. I agree. I agree. And then mm -hmm. I have the suburban retired folk that like to sit outside and smoke and eat yeah, and drink yeah, and whatever. Yeah. And you can go and like, I'll go shopping for food and just watch people or like even with food options, like Whitney and I was just trying to order takeout before our interview. And I'm like, damn, there's no real healthy food options. It's Burger King, no. Popeye, this, that, that like, I love home cooked food. You know what I'm saying? I cook right. all the time. I, I'm cool with supporting any kind of like ethnic food once it's home cooked, but I'm tired of, of big box retail and Right, exactly. I think that, that you guys um you might like um DTC area. Have you had a chance to go to um like the Bellevue and, and, and Denver Tech Center area? What, what neighborhood is that in? So I'm in Greenwood Village, and that's like Denver Tech Center. It's closer to uh, Parker. Okay, I have it. Littleton. Yeah, I think you'll find some great spots for what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you will. I've been out in Green Valley Ranch. I like the homes are looking good coming up there. So, yeah, I yeah. like it out there also. Mm -hmm. What would be smart if, you know, some people put some money together and buy into some properties now while they're low? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that would be the smartest thing. That's that's the smartest thing people should do during the pandemic. Anyway, find some anyway. folks to draw up a contract, invest in some property. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, get ten yeah. people and an attorney. You can do some powerful things. Yeah, oh, real. I love, I love how you think yeah. all the time. I'm a fan. Yeah. Um, I want you now to tell us about your work. Tell us about the spoken word, the poetry, the music. Any collaborations? What do you want to share with the viewers? Uh, I have so much coming up for 2021. So um, I'm dropping a visual poetic story called Mosaic. And it's an abstract story talking about Blackness. It's poetry. And it's something different from what I'm doing. Because it's like poetry without music. But it is going to feel musical through the visuals. I like it. So mm -hmm. I just can't wait to drop it. It's something I've been yeah. working on the past few months. And yeah. um yeah, are you I, are you in the studio as far as at home due to the pandemic or where I'm how working, are you recording? I'm building my in home studio. So moving out here, we sold a lot of our gear. So I tried connecting with other like engineers and artists out here, and we met some people. The one struggle we found, you know, with certain people. In general, during this time, it's just not taking their craft seriously and not being forthcoming. Right. 
right. with what they can offer and what they can provide. Right. So right now we're in the process of building our in-home studio. I have my photo okay. studio ready, but we're like still getting our music studio ready right now. So. Well, I hope you put a Kickstarter up and I hope the viewers can put into that. Um, definitely help you. You're a beautiful soul. What you put out to the people, it needs to be heard. So if you get that going, share it with me and I will. Yes, we we I understand will. that. We definitely understand that. Now, yes. um, did, what about collaborations? Have you? I, you know, I have a lot. Um, okay. I'm collaborating with this Black femme creative called Crow Art. She used to actually be located in Denver, and she just relocated back to the East Coast. Okay. But she is a, a trippy, abstract political artist, and she's showcasing wow. my art in February. And I'm just so so excited to show I my love painting. It. And yeah. It's just like a different show. Us some you know? of your work. I want to see if you if you can get it in there. Ooh. Just a different side of like, right? You know, mm -hmm. and these are some of the pieces that she's including in her collection. Lost and you can find this it. at prosearts.com, okay. or you can go to the Soul Gallery on Instagram and see some of my newest work. The and then Soul this Gallery, okay. The Soul Gallery, D A S O U L G A L L E R Y. I'm an art so buyer, so I know I'm gonna get a piece just because I yes. know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got. I, love uh, it. I have a whole new collection that I'm dropping called Frequencies. So it's all just like trippy art that's speaking like positive affirmations and mantras, but in like the frequencies of colors or vibes. So it will be me in my different states of high. I'm a big advocate of like, how can I put it? not being not using you know your vices as a crutch you know what i'm saying use this, use your vices as a way to communicate your high you know what i'm saying and right, right. i enjoy cannabis i enjoy you know psychedelics i enjoy infusing those things into my art and making something beautiful out of it and being able to speak different layers of myself through it you know what i'm oh, saying okay. so mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, just fine. And, and your psychedelics, did you you were happy that it's legalized? And do you have someone that prescribes it? Or, I mean, I, I saw I the process kind of happen. I in don't Colorado. have someone that prescribes it yet. I would love to find someone that prescribes it. But right now, I'm in the process of growing my own. And I have someone yeah. that I'm really cool with that I trust their process right. of growing. That's and good. That's good. I've been getting from them. And, you know, since I've been out here, They've been, they've been kind of like my spiritual shaman with everything. Cause I don't look at it as like drugs, you know, cause exactly. drugs have such a, a negative a connotation to me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I am not a drug user, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, exactly. I am a spirit, I'm a kindred spirit and I'm just interacting with my environment. I know how to control my highs. I don't need to dive into every kind of high to deal with my problems. I'd rather not be high when I'm feeling right. problematic. And that's yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. Do, do, okay, I need you to go a little deeper into that. So you okay, said you don't, so, when you're feeling like problematic, like angry, upset. Yeah, angry, sad, upset, you know, anxiety, drama feels. I'm just feeling in a state of like, this is not me in my space. I don't enjoy being high. You understand what I'm saying? Because I used to, I, I used to be addicted to drugs. So this is where this healing is coming got in. Got where it, you have to it. be honest about your problems, honest about how you cope with things, That's honest good. about how you interact with people, and what what brings you to those spaces, what traumatizes you, right? You know what gets That's you upset, good. and and how you can help yourself within that process. And a lot of times, you know, you see people that smoke a ton of weed or like sniff coke or whatever they do just to do it you know what i'm saying and they're just doing it to deal with whatever trauma that they have this addiction right. but this addiction right. is not something that they're addicted to they're just addicted to the high of how it makes them feel right. so i rather understand my waves of emotions before i get high so I can enjoy my high and not feel low when my high goes. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. Because then if you use it for that reason, as soon as it comes down, bam, you're back in the same place. So. And, and that's what you see, right? So many yeah. sad people walking outside, dealing with their problems, 
eating themselves up, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Consuming mm -hmm. shit that they don't need to consume, not helping themselves, not processing right. things. Like right. it's sad. It's sad. So yeah, I, I just can't do that. I'm just I, I just can't be in that space at I all. I think you just uh learned us today some new things about it because so many people think they understand it and um Calling cannabis a drug, um, the previous guest spoke about that. What a stigma. What a what a way to uh, belittle it so that people don't understand right. the benefits of it. So, yeah. yeah. Like, thank you for this sharing so that. Beneficial. But it's you have to be beneficial in yourself to enjoy the beneficialness that cannabis is going to give you, you know, because exactly. you can just end up being another pothead. I've heard the you same know. for the psychedelics. I've heard the same. Like in and, and yeah. doing, doing being um, it's everything. It's knowledgeable. Everything. Yeah. 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 I love that. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys viewing, if you have some questions and you need to uh, connect with her in just a few, we're going to share how to reach out to Lay Soul on social yeah. media. So that, that is your thing. I know a lot of prior military dealing with the similar issues. So you guys need to yeah. talk for sure. And, I'm also um, dropping uh, a song called Water uh, for Valentine's Day with my partner. And it's like a, a soulful, vibesy kind of, it, it's, it's different. It's completely different. I'm really, really excited. You know, I think I want to cut it. in uh, just a minute so they can see. Um, before we talk about the important part of your work, can we hear right. some of your work? Yeah. <laughs> You want me to say some poetry or you yeah. going to whatever you feel is best, especially, you know, what we're feeling, what the vibe that we're in today. So, OK, I'll let you go OK. Um, see, can you remember who you were before the world told you who to be opting out of greatness to join conformity, just settling while living life homelessly? See, even though you have a nine to five, that is what is expected of you to survive. Each day passing you by, the truth is classified, but it's hidden right before your very eyes. And that's, that's just an right. excerpt from this poem that called Distant Memory. Yeah. What was the name of that one again? Distant Memory. Distant Memory. And um, well, we're going to talk about how to find you. I'm not going to give it away yet. So what would you say <laughs> is the most important part of your work? Um, The most important part of my work is to just keep it authentic, you know what I'm saying? Stay true to myself, stay true to the message that I am trying to give to my platform while still aiming to aspire, to inspire others, you know what I'm saying? Still yes, giving it back in. Still You're making doing it. You're this. doing it. I don't even know if you know you walk around with that energy, but you definitely do it. Thank Don't you. walk away from it. Don't walk away from it. This is your calling. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to dig into your creation process as we did just a moment ago. You were talking about setting up the studio, but how do yeah. you form your lyrics? Um, pulling on the, the main life? thing that I do is I go into a quiet space and I'm a big advocate of free writing. So I write about anything, whether it's just my thoughts, how I'm feeling, uh, something I want to communicate, the first thing that pops in my mind, I just write it. And I'll write for about 20, 30 minutes. And then those same ideas that I wrote about and just let my mind freely go and just write, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. stopping, but just, just writing. I elaborate from that. And I That's pick and choose what I want to use and build from that. And that was an activity I actually used to use to my poetry students, and they loved it. And I, I love it. Students. So... Okay. If they can do it, anyone can do it. Writer's block is so, I wouldn't say it's easy to get over, but you just got to train yourself. You got to. You got to tell me how to do this because at book number six, I stopped. So yeah. how do you, how do you get out of this so-called writer's block? I, uh, you know, I kind of like dive into different aspects of my talents. So if I, I see myself having writer's block, I'll paint or I'll dance, or I'll go to a museum, or I'll take something else in that I really, really enjoy and build from that idea, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Or I'll give myself writing activities. So I'll think of a topic or a color or something that I wanna talk about, put that at the top of my page and just write about it. And set my yeah. timer and write. And whatever I wrote, I go over it. And you can build so much from the creative random 
thoughts that you have in your head. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just got to go through it and sit in silence and hear the noise within yourself. It's there. So that's good. Know. That's a good tip right there because I write about mm -hmm. relationships and um, sometimes I'm like, do they get tired of hearing about it? But um, that's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that was for me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about um, your career for just a moment outside of the arts. Okay. Um, let's talk about what you do in, in, I don't know if you guys call it like real world, career world, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, I guess the matrix, we're real world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, the real working yeah. world. I'm a food service manager and um, I've been working in food service management for like over five years now yeah. in different cities. So right now, uh, Whitney and I are working on, we have a brand called Creole Craze. We're both Creole. I'm Caribbean Creole, and he's okay. like New Orleans Creole. So okay. bringing mm -hmm. our Creole culture, food, and cannabis together. So nice. we're re like launching our brand next year. So I'm just taking the skills that I've been learning in the real world and <laughs> bringing it right back into my that's heart. That's good. That's good. Yeah. My, my fiance is from Louisiana. I think that's just something about Louisiana. Yeah. That yeah. cooking. <laughs> Yeah, cooking, yeah. the family oriented environment. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just a, it's just it's just something about Louisiana folks. It's yeah, just a indeed. love you know, that they have. I'm trying definitely. to read, uh, he said Baton Rouge. What is he? he after Baton Rouge Creole. That's what he said. Honey said. Right, I'm right, reading right. the comments. <laughs> They're like, you got your glasses on, girl. What's wrong? Sorry. Um, <laughs> these are just my readers, and I think my contacts are getting really weak. No, not um, at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I love that you do that. Um, you find yourself meeting a lot of people and telling them about your art while you're in that yeah. service management. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think yeah. food service, anything service, hospitality, and like, you know, you're going to meet people. And yeah. I've been in customer service and hospitality and food service environment in totality for over 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And most of my experience is, is in New York City, working in Midtown, working in Times Square. Working nice. by the tour, working in different areas where I've gotten to meet celebrities, I've gotten to work private events, I've gotten to work festivals, concerts, and and, and different things where it, it not only helped with my network connections, but it just helped me with public speaking in general. It helped me with my confidence. It gave okay. me that drive of seeing other people who look like me or exactly. who doesn't look like me, but have like a story like mine that I can fall back on and look to and and keep that drive going. You know what I'm saying? Keep that exactly. Going. And yeah. I think that's good. That I think that's the positive of it. Meeting so many people, you're gonna take those people with you until forever. So right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's that's a really great thing about it. And also I want to make sure oh we're doing good with time. Um but tell us about your products. So is it just art? What all do you do as far as services go? Uh, right now, I just debuted my t-shirts. My t-shirts are still in the store, but I have my Forever So Live mask. So if okay. anybody would love mass, DM me Forever So Live on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, I, look cute. Do I do that writing cute. services. We okay. host virtual open mics on the Forever Soul Live page. Um, okay. Just a lot of different like creative things. So if you need a painting from for me, the you culture, want paint for the culture, indeed, I love it. Yeah, you keep something going for the yeah. culture twenty four seven. Yeah, definitely, yeah. you have to. No. I say that part again about um, the paintings. You said if someone needs the paintings from yeah, you. Yeah, if you want paint lessons or, you know, you want to do, you want a, a intimate painting sip, let me know, you know? Like, if you want to work on your writing skills or learn the basics of poetry, I'm your girl. You can definitely do that. I bartend. I, I try to dive in to different layers of my creative self, you know what I'm saying? You have to wear many hats to sustain yourself, you know? So the greatest gift you have- And are you doing, um, excuse me, are you doing virtual classes, like anywhere all over the globe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. just got a message. Yeah. Okay, so Cash App, PayPal, you, you're the girl. You yeah, take Cash it all. App, okay. PayPal, Venmo. Yeah, definitely. All right, I want you guys to get your kids involved. I'm seeing some things happening um, in Atlanta. And when I see that happening with the youth, I want to speak to Atlanta because they were talking about that earlier. When I see mm -hmm. that happening to the youth, 
people like lay soul that's what you that's how you connect get them busy get their mind right. busy don't let them be so restless you know because mm -hmm. that's when you see the arguments and the fights and the drama because maybe they just don't have enough to do while you're busy at work mom and dad so reach out my people parents tell you really they have these services on, you know my parents are big on like after school programs like i'm i'm going to be 30 next year and just like yeah. from the time i was a child and like my mom was big on after school summer camp extracurricular activities if i can't afford it i'm gonna find a free program for you to go to and hone your skills and exactly. that's not pushed anymore you know what i'm saying exactly. like art resources and encouragement is not pushed and we can't blame schools you understand because no. like mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. are so underpaid i was a teacher you know what i'm saying okay. i'm telling mm -hmm. you Teachers are underpaid and they're working in communities where, you know, sometimes they don't understand the demographics, you know what I'm saying, of the community right. they're working with. And yeah, you have a choice of the job that you want to do as well. I, I get that. But right. at the same time, people, our government, you know what I'm saying, our, our leaders, our people that we look up to, we pay our tax dollars to, they also have that responsibility to make sure the community is good and they're not. So you have putting the right people in place. Like, why would you yeah. put a teacher that's not from that community? Yeah. And that's yeah. the same way they do the police, though, right? They put mm -hmm. officers mm -hmm. in different communities that they don't personally know. They weren't raised in or they, they don't yeah. understand the demographics of that community and asking yeah. them to survive. Yeah, that's how you safe on both, on both sides. Yeah, from the student to the teacher, from the officer to the resident. Yeah. It's just not a good mix if they don't so know the environment. Yeah. The community within ourselves and us yeah. enriching what we have. And if you don't have those resources, then find it because there's help. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Not mm -hmm. everyone. I didn't come from parents with college educations. You know what I'm there saying? You like, there you go. So mm -hmm. there's so many people that are going through that struggle. And even if they may not communicate about it, it's it's the truth. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Community. And, and reach and out to somebody. Like, you can't, you got to ask. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Like, if you don't ask, then you don't know. You may not know what all she does. Right. And that's why I like doing the interviews. Like, People don't understand. Like I could be pulling somebody from Atlanta, and I'll have mm -hmm. an Atlanta viewer that says, "I didn't never knew that person was in my town." So that's right. the reason why the platforms are, you know, important to tell I, the story. I like the virtual events a little bit more too, because like sometimes you have people tuned in, and it's like this person's in Tennessee, this person's in New York, this person's here, and mm -hmm. we're all sharing that time and energy, yeah. and we're all yeah. leaving within our respective places and sharing right, exactly. that with other people. Exactly. And it's, it's and a the, bigger community it's a that big, we're- I, I love it. I love that uh, 2020 brought that, the well, pandemic, whatever, yeah. it brought that out more. Yeah. It did. Yeah. It did. Because I, you know, I've always said, I tell you guys all the time, just me at the camera thing is hard for me. So- um, right, 2020 is like, Same. I don't care. You're still going to do it anyway. And so- Right. It took me yeah. some time. You know, because yeah. I, I come from, you know, open mics, hopefully hosting open mics and art shows, going to parties, doing VIP events, you know what I'm saying? Being yeah. the social butterfly that I am, yeah, to being yeah. told, like, you cannot do anything. Like, when the country went through its first shutdown, this is in the heart, like, the heat of us, like, hosting open mics in Philadelphia. We was hosting open mics wow. at the Wilma Theater on Broad Street in Philadelphia. Okay. And that's, like, the Broadway of Philly, and it's it's such a white space to have a black movement there, even right. for a temporary time. It was big, and everything got canceled. And I had artists coming from like Virginia and and New York and oh, wow. whatever for like our biggest show, and it was so disappointing. And yeah. you have to just take disappointments, and again, like make it beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And you just exactly. have to. You can't control anything but yourself and how you respond to things you know what i'm saying so there's the lesson there's the message yeah how we respond to it because we have yeah. to expect the unexpected because whatever happens so you can be mm -hmm. real real mad and be bitter and get in under your covers and not come out or you just read but you're holding and yourself, yourself back and nobody cares in the end you know, so right they're gonna be like okay she's under her covers where's the next person right. that's similar to her that does this yeah Right, yeah, exactly, exactly that part. Okay, so um, we have um, now to go into what is your most important role, which I think I feel that vibe. 
What do you feel your most important role is in the black community? Um, being myself while giving back, uh, teaching and inspiring the youth, walking the walk that my mentors before I have done. So just, you know, being an example of everything that I'm preaching, making sure that I talk to children or inspire children or give back mm -hmm. or do whatever I can do and mm -hmm. just being myself, but still growing within that process, still taking criticisms and critiques and just learning in my environment. Right. Right. If like I conquered this environment, then uproot myself out of that environment and go somewhere else and learn about somebody else's struggle in their environment. Yeah. So. You are the epitome of ego. And when I say this, you have successfully did the Deepak Chopra ego where he says, yeah. um, well, you're the, I'm not going to say ego, but he says edging God out. You have really literally mastered like not having ego in any aspect of what yeah. you've shown, like from your music to all parts of your life, like the art, everything you show us, you're just like, I bring me and unapologetically, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah exactly. And this I is think it's I draining like yeah. being someone that not, and you always have yeah. to like keep up with it all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Of, it's it's the personas so all the time. Working yeah. as an admin, as a black admin in a, co mm -hmm. a corporate world in downtown Denver. Um, yeah, there's just, there's, I went maybe two weeks, went to a shop on Colfax and got some braids because missing my braids, right? So I went yeah. and got some braids and, and just taking that culture into the corporate office that I was in downtown Denver, they weren't ready. They when the pandemic is over, I am ready to go back in the office and see, are the CEOs ready? Because I'm an admin for CEOs. So are you guys ready for handling what happens in the office when we wear braids? Because it's hard right. to have build a whole career as an admin and having that you know, I want to come with a scarf on my head. Like, I'm ready. You know, I'll say all kinds of things at the office. And they're like, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because it's, I it, want it's, that. It's funny for me, and people are trying to police black standards. Exactly. It's it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. why, why should there be laws to be passed for black women and men to wear their hair? How we want to wear our hair. I've lost jobs. That is because sad. Because I choose to be natural. Like, you know what I'm saying? I lost yeah. jobs because I, I choose not to wear a ton of makeup. Like, I choose yeah. not to feel superficial when I walk yeah. inside because I know that's not something that I can keep up with. Right. That's not. Yeah, it's not. It's, not, it's like it. you have to. It's either you or it isn't you. That's yeah. just the bottom line. Like, people shouldn't be forced to have yeah. to go one direction. Right. I love yeah. that, that you said mm -hmm. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I know the firing because of your hair. Um, the firing, even just because of the culture, um, you know, things that you want to participate in. Um, right. Are you going to go over to the country club? We line dance on Wednesdays. I, Wednesdays. I have no issue with it, but this is not what I do. So, to right. say, well, that comes with the culture of the job that we're on. I, oh, I'm sorry. I went on an event. I went to the left. Uh, <laughs> all right, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, so uh, loving the conversation. I don't know. I, thank you. Thank even you. like here, like like white people here, and I say this with the most like respect. White people here are really, really weird. I don't know if it's because like folks, so a lot of white people here. Have, there's a lot of white people that I've met. You know, what I'm saying that mm -hmm. have are straight Colorado natives. You know, what I'm saying right. so mm -hmm. they're yeah. so used to their environment, and and the black culture that I'm used to queen and the black culture, even you, you're, you're used to in the South. Yeah, it's yeah. not the black culture you see here. It's like not. York, black people mm -hmm. are live. Okay. Black people yeah. are lit. Okay. Lit, all the, lit, all oh, the way. Uh, yes, you know exactly. yes, like, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. We can fly yeah. New York right now. And I know everybody like we're going right. to, my people are going to throw a party. People's is outside being themselves. Not Music here. Is not here. Not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People and even even white folks in New York, they and don't get there's there's a level of appropriation everywhere, right? Of course. But of what course. I'm saying mm -hmm. is there's a respect also to understanding that this is not our culture, right? Because like in New York, black people hold people accountable, period, because we're about that ego. You have to be a hustler 
to survive, period. So it's not about white, black, yellow, or blue. It's about like knowing yourself to get your I bills paid. Agree. I agree. It's 1400 you know, you don't have food stamps. So you got to pay for public transportation. You got this. And you got to you gotta balance all that out and make sure yeah. they make it work. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah. we ain't legal. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So you got yeah. so much stuff. So people are not, and not saying, I, I have, I've experienced more racist moments yeah. out of state than yeah. I have in New York, yeah, like in, in and Frank I'm from Austin, I, Texas. Here. And I, I close time, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have I had people say the weirdest things to me. I I've been in places where I wore. I've seen people wear white people wear Black Lives Matter shirts, and you stay high to these people, and they grill you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is the only state I lived in that they had Ku Klux Klan meetups. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not yeah. saying that this doesn't well, happen. Texas, that's unfortunately been... I, I've never experienced yeah, you, that. You're not I'm from that. Really. Not up from no, you know, New York. Yeah, yeah. so it's, no. just, it's just all learning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just all learning. And yeah, I'm sorry it's about that because yeah. you shouldn't have not to experience sorry, that. I need to know. To that. Because yeah. that's... But at the same time, like, People, like we're not being told these things, right? Like exactly. there's people that still don't know Flint doesn't have clean water, but two towns over from Flint, Michigan, their water is fine. So right. like these things are things that we have to we have to educate our people. You know what I'm right. saying? Even if it's exactly. the smallest tidbits of information of the environment exactly. that you're staying in, so people are aware of how to survive. And it's, it's exactly. that's what it's about. And one thing that you are saying right there, people have this persona of Denver, and I understand that Colorado likes to put their culture yeah. out, and they feel like outsiders either adapt or go. We, you know, I've seen right. it all. If anyone has been familiar with me commenting under the Denver post, then you guys know that I have conversations with people that make <laughs> comments like that all the time. But but, um, you know, it's not about what they have here is if you are an Ethiopian with an accent with my same skin color, they will respect you more than when I begin to speak. Right. And they realize that you're just a black American. That's right. the culture. That's the reality. Just, George Africa, Floyd hasn't and, changed that. That's what no, needs to right. change here in Denver. Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger than like it's us as black people have to change our 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 the way we process togetherness and community mm -hmm. and you know stigmas because we judge ourselves so much that other people have that power to judge us. Wow, and that's I good. That's wrote good. This quote from Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes love you know, Malcolm X. Hold yeah, on, Queen. I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm what, what okay. did I do? Yeah. So this quote from Malcolm X. I'm trying to get back to you right now. That's okay. We can still hear you. So. I know. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm going to my notes. Hold on one second. There can be no black and white unity until there is first some black unity. We cannot think of uniting with others until after we have first united amongst ourselves. We others until we have first Damn proven man. acceptable to ourselves. And I think that's the biggest thing that we have to remember. We have to accept ourselves. Okay, do me a favor, Lay so stay right there with me. You guys want a commercial break for just a moment. What I want you to do is remove from the stream and the come stream back and to come the back to the uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. Got okay. you. Got you. Got you. All right. Thanks, you guys, for being patient. I appreciate that so much. We are talking to Lay. So she's about to tell you in just a moment how you can find her on social media. And let's see, I have to see a visual there. She's about to share with you how to find her on social media, and I'm going to give that information to you. But this has been an amazing conversation. Honey Reborn says, <laughs> loving the conversation, ladies. Thank you, my love. I appreciate that. You guys, she is sharing her work with us, her art. Um, she is also sharing with us. Um, let's give it a, just a moment. Keep in mind also that we have a snow day here. So um, 
we definitely have some connection connection concerns when it comes to there we go so you guys be patient okay. with us this is snow day weather is funny so we're, we're being as brave as we can yeah be this day. <laughs> yeah okay good. let's start back at the beginning of that quote yeah okay so i'm gonna reread back that quote and um I've, I've just been really big on just processing community. I think that's been like one of the, like the biggest lessons, like patience and community, like understanding community. And regardless, if you're not from a community, community will come together if you know how to bring community together by controlling your own self. And that's again, it. it's Malcolm X quote, there can be no black and white unity until there's first some black unity. We cannot think of uniting with others until after we have first united amongst ourselves. We cannot think of being acceptable to others until we have first proven acceptable to ourselves. That's and it. that's it. Yeah, that we got to empower it. ourselves. That we got to empower mm -hmm. others. Stop hating on your friends for for being their best selves. You should want them to be like be exactly. their best. Self, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Encourage people around you. And support mm -hmm. others, support black, you know what I'm saying? Like buy black, you know, support yourself. Buy black, you support forward. black and stop that black, mean you know? and gossiping. And uh, I just see so much nasty that if we do away with yeah. that, we can learn from some other cultures. There's For real. some cultures that don't do it. You know, I think that um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. I want to get your election um, thoughts, but I'm going to say something about her. And Oh, I'm not going to go there yet. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I lost my face. I'm sorry, Queen. No, you're good. Okay. Um, before we go into the election thoughts, um, can you share your thoughts on the pandemic, COVID-19? How has it impacted your work, your business, your daily activities, and your creative flow? Um, so things that I was just used to, like just being social from like hosting weekly open mics to like doing performances, doing like photo shoots. To everything just stopping and you know everything's stopping during like in a pandemic in a new state you know what i'm saying where now i'm not able to quickly go to my resources so i had to learn really quickly and it was it was tough at first you know what i'm saying yeah, especially when you're yeah. in that flow of feeling yourself you're feeling like everything is going yeah. to where you need it to be and then something beyond your control stops what you are trying to do so yeah. just learning to process disappointment as well. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And taking disappointment as part of the process and not blaming yourself for every everything that happens. Because, like, you can't control the environment. Like, you literally no. can't control no. the environment. What happens, happens. Yeah. And we have to have yeah. a, something to tap into to get past it. Or get like through, it, through it, through it, yeah. Not past it. Sorry about that, you guys. Get through. No, it. you're good. Yeah. It was. Just, yeah. I was just, you know, reflecting back when the government shutdown happened. We were actually in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? And we were getting things ready, like you know, our our his ID and everything ready for when we did move out here. And as soon as you know we got there and did what we had to do, our flights got canceled. You know, because yeah, everything yeah. started getting canceled yeah, and it yeah. just started to hit really, really quickly being stuck in another state <laughs> and, yeah. and figuring a way back to here, you know, it was, it was just a lot going on. So it's just learning yeah. to like, you know, find happiness through things, find, you know, like just find things to keep you motivated. From, I think from if certain we do your ritual, if we learn how to wake up, and do the affirmations and decide right. how our day is going to be. That's the yeah. tip that you left with the viewers. Yeah. Like that, that might be a better way to process what, Your what we're going through. the greatest weapon that you have. You know what I'm saying? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you, you steer, you steer, your, this is your vehicle and you're steering yourself to like exactly. where you need to go, you know? So. Exactly. I just love me some nice song. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, <laughs> let's, let's hear your thoughts and we're going to go, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. Um, let's hear your thoughts on injustice in Black America. The way yeah. that we're very aware that Black Lives Matter, but what do you think about the Black Lives Matter movement? and the pain facing the black community in and out of every state and area. I mean, I wrote something down, but I'm gonna kind of like go off the top of my head a little bit. I'm just tired of things being a hashtag. Like that, that's like first and foremost, like when people Same. die, when people get hurt, when something happens, we will have it as a hashtag for like 
a week or two and then it disappears. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas before and not saying that we do not, we're not fighting. We are, we are fighting. We are speaking. We are angry. Right. But yeah. at the same time, it's still like, I feel like a watered down version of what the original race fights were, you know what I'm right. saying? And there like, we go. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a different there were kind no of hashtags. <laughs> we're not doing yeah. things for social media. They were doing things because yeah. they, their fathers yeah. fought for it. Their mothers fought for it. They mm-hmm. had friends that died for it. You know what I'm saying? There's there people go. literally that they're seeing getting killed for it. Their, their vitality to existence depends on them walking. So, you know, I just feel like we have to do things with more of like a purpose, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because race mm-hmm. and hate is already embedded into black culture. And that's not from us. However, right. how we process and how we deal with that hate, you know, it, it, that's up to us. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes mm-hmm. that's, that's the shit end of the stick, you know, yeah. it's sad. Yeah. However, there's yeah. no one to help us but us. And that's where it goes to us holding each other accountable, us having community, you know what I'm saying? Us having that sense of organization for for ourselves. Because when you look at different, you know, ethnicities, like for example, I lived in a gentrified part of Brooklyn, uh, Crown right. Heights, Jewish neighborhood. I grew up in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Bed-Stuy is a predominantly black and Latino neighborhood. Now it's more gentrified, right? Right, but, right. This is what it was. And going to Crown Heights or going to Williamsburg, for example, and you seeing the Jews, the Jews had community. They put their money Unity. together. Unity and community. community. Mm-hmm. Schools, yeah. hospitals, mm-hmm. churches, mom. So if anything happened to them, you know what I'm saying? Anything happened to them, they are protecting themselves. Their people exactly. get called before the official people get called, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're taking care of themselves. And I've seen places like that. Like I, I was blessed to grow up next to community hospitals and, and and community services that were like that. And that are still thriving like that in New York. But there's a a lot of people that are not, that have, have never been able to see that. So it's really for us to like, you know, create that community and and build that. And that's bigger than marching. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? That's bigger it's than, bigger than a hashtag. It's bigger than, it's bigger than, than um, a meetup and, 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 and yeah, don't burn anything. Yeah, man. yeah. I'm tired of it. Like, it's not like I'm tired of like, I, I, I want people to band together. I'm just tired of everything just being for show. You know what I'm saying? It's it's so many levels. There's there's people that are really doing this and they feel very passionate. They want to give yeah. back. And there's other mm-hmm. folks that, man, it's just, it's literally a hashtag. And yeah. You know, it's sad because <laughs> we we are still getting. We're in a fight for our lives, and people are having a popularity yeah. moment on IG. <laughs> for, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. people must learn their history, their rights, invest in land stocks. Our people have so much healing and reworking in our neighborhoods. You know, and that's what we really need to do. Yeah. And the quicker, you know, we learn and we really take time to really educate ourselves, educate one another, help one another, feed one another and, and band together. You know what I'm saying? That part. You know, racism is going to take a really, 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 really long time. But I mean, yeah. we can, we can take this time to at least heal within ourselves to, to heal the hurt around us. So. Something that you told the viewers earlier is that I'm going to paraphrase and they'll rewind it to see how you said it. But um, how to how can you get the respect if we don't show it as one? I'm right. All of us. So, so how can you go out and say my life matters? You better understand it when they always hit us back. Hey, sick flow in the house. They always hit us back with, but y'all don't act like your lives matter. And then we go into that back and forth. Yeah. So, say that again. How or you know tell the people again that you know. The point you were making because I probably messed it up a little bit. Yeah, but, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the uh, back to the Malcolm X quote, or just like well, together. just just the concept of it. Just like we need to yeah, unite we, and treat ourselves yeah. better. Yeah, we can't expect other people to unite with us and want to help our struggles unless we are united within ourselves, and that's bigger than 
uniting us as sisters. It's us you being united within us, within our peace, and then us uniting within our families and then our community. You know what I'm saying? And then being united within other people. It's levels. It's like you exactly. planting the seed of a tree and waiting for the tree to sprout. You have to wait, you know what I'm saying? That for the part. growth, for you able to, to feed to other people, but you got to feed yourself first. And it takes so much time to heal, but it's, it's just to acknowledge that you are hurt. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And there's a yeah. lot of people that don't want to acknowledge that they're hurt or they're hurting or, you know, we are hurting. We're mad. You know what I'm saying? As We're hell. mad. And As it's hell. not okay. And it's, <laughs> it's okay not to not okay. feel okay. So yeah. what are you going to do yeah. about it? I'm tired yeah. of fucking marching. That's so what right. are we going to do about it? That's do you right. want to invest in the, this abandoned lands? This abandoned, I walk past abandoned lots all the time. I talk Come to on. people. About it. It's like, yo, let's, let's put our money together. But people rather buy other shit than invest into something that their kids can have. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And and yeah. this this is where we're we're lacking. We gotta really rework the way we we think about community and togetherness mm -hmm. and being grounded within ourselves. And this right. is quantity. So if you guys are not yeah. understanding these values and principles, man. Yeah. yeah, tell us about today. Um go into the a little bit uh, about Kwanzaa for the viewers who are unaware. I'm still learning as I watch you guys share it. Um, but tell us about what today Kwanzaa, means. It's about, it's Black principles that we can do and use in our everyday lives. Like, I consider it like the seven chakra principles of Blackness. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Mm -hmm, From Ujima, mm -hmm. today's principle is Ujama, which is community economics. Which there right now, go. this is what we're doing, right? This, we're this, networking, this. we're talking about our community. You know That's what I'm saying? It. We're talking That's about some kind of giving back to the community, how we're right. being, you know, purposeful in the community and, and what 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 walks and how we're practicing these community economics. You know what I'm saying? Kumba exactly. is creativity. How are you creative within your voice? How do you speak in your creativity? How do you inspire others with that? It, it's so right. many different principles that I feel like regardless of whether or not we celebrate Kwanzaa, just look at in the principles because like these are principles that we need. The principles are, are right on time. They feel really yeah. good. I I don't know how it shifted, but this I saw people celebrate Kwanzaa for years. Um, I grew up in a right. non-denominational kind of Bible-based life. Right. And I left I left it in two thousand and seven. So I'm um Jamie Fox and Soul. I'm just kind of out there in the in the middle of the yeah. universe, finding my way, but um, and that's that's what we all are. You know, that's going on. As I read the guy, as you guys shared the Kwanzaa, I'm like, wow, that one's on time for today. Look up, are you looking around? And then even with the community, yeah, every, like each day is economic. really a message in each day. Um, that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. and you don't have to, you don't feel that pressure of you know, just that, that retail mindset, oh, I have to buy something, I have to do this, or I have to do that. It's like Kwanzaa, that it's you celebrating yourself, you celebrating your family, you celebrating your blackness, you celebrating having standards. We are supposed to have standards. Black there folks can live in luxury, you know what I'm saying? And, and we have the right to, to feel amazing and abundant about ourselves, despite right. what other people are telling us to feel, you know what I'm saying? Right, uh, telling us what we cannot ever be or all those things, yeah. yeah. Love it, sis, love it. Ah, oh, I knew you were gonna be a great guest. Okay, so, <laughs> so I hear how you feel on that. Now I'm gonna switch it over to politics only for a moment, feel free to uh, decline. Um, any 2020 election win thoughts? Um, I'm just glad. Like, you know, I, I'm not too much into politics. I'm not too fond of Biden and Trump, you know, he's 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 a character. I'm just glad that he, the people that are in office are very serious about their jobs now. The ones that are going to office, going shall to I office. might say. <laughs> yeah, that are in the office January 20th. Yes, quite well made. Are very well-rounded in their jobs. They have experience. Even though their views may not be the same as our views, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, we as a community and them as elected officials can come together and come to a middle ground of how to just heal this country. Because regardless, that's the, the underground issue is just to make sure this country is healed and and safe and we can move forward. There's people that are still dying 
every day from COVID. Every day. People that, even if they're not dying from COVID, poverty right now is killing them. The economic Ooh. issues in this country is killing them. There are people that are being starved right now. There are people yeah. that are going through so much issues. Homelessness is a very big crisis in the country, period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just, you know, yeah. hoping that these people are going to do right by us. And yeah. that's it. That's the most I can and, hope for. Yeah. And move that negative um, self, uh, self-destruction self person. And because he was a self-destruction person, he brought no nothing but destruction, you know? Right. So we should have expected it. Because right. Because I watched him as a celebrity for years. So all, couldn't I'm manage the marriages people. that he was in, yeah. let alone our lives. New Yorkers knew Trump wasn't shit to start with. It's just, you know, Trump that taught part. people that, that part. <laughs> yeah. reality stars can be anything that they want to be, okay? Like, you can be anything that you want to be. If Trump did it, you can do it. There's no excuse. Anybody okay? can do it at this point. Come on, now. It. You can do it, yeah, man. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah, look, so. I told you, you always find a good... Thank you for finding something, because <laughs> I had nothing. Cheeseburger eating self. Okay, mm. so... <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Not with, not with today's guest, I will behave. Okay, so what? what's your most adventurous trip, Laysol, or activity in your lifespan? What's the most adventurous thing you've um, I have not really been out the country as of yet. That's, that's definitely going to change next year. I think the okay. furthest I've been to was Puerto Rico. And during that experience, I have a thing wherever, whenever I'm in a new place, I like to go to its hood or its its urban environment. I don't like saying ghetto, but I like to go to its hood to understand people, to understand people like myself that are going through struggles. And when yeah. you walk in Puerto Rico's like touristy area, right. you can look at the levels. Like when you're in the touristy area, it's literally elevated from the poor area of Puerto Rico. And it's like, you have to climb down yeah. this mountain to go to the poor area of Puerto Rico. And what we consider oh, poor, wow. It's literally like them living in like like really run down houses, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. having clothes hung up, like kind of mind skid row, you, like wow, this is wow. The of, of living for them. But it's just like especially since they consider Puerto Rico a US territory, right? But Puerto Rico was one of the last places forgotten about with stimulus checks, with government help this year. People don't yeah. like like it's just it's so many America is so segregated and, and so yeah. many things. Even though we're told we're being in, we're integrated, even we're told we're together, America is so segregated and separated. And in a lot of ways, just how we take care of certain states have people hating each other. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, yep. Yeah. And, and we're like, supposed to be as one. Exactly. You know, like yeah. I, I just had to understand, especially growing up and I have seen a lot of Puerto Ricans as friends and, you know, Seeing people, seeing how people treated them, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to just go there to enjoy. I wanted to really, like, understand what they seen and what they felt, you know? So. You did more than just a selfish vacation IG. I'm telling you, this is your example. <laughs> because you didn't do it. You went in to really find the culture, see yeah. the culture, understand the culture. That's what yeah, traveling I'm better too. turn into. I want everybody to start traveling that way. So yeah, you got trying to. Trying to take a picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and but tell life, us life got to be worth living. You know what I'm saying? And it's bigger exactly. than just experiences. You know what I'm saying? It has to exactly. be a message. You could die tomorrow and all you did was just take a picture or you went surfing or whatever. None of that, none of that matters. You know none what I'm saying? Did you understand yeah. the people around you? Can the people around you say anything about you? Like uh, that Nashville incident they were talking about earlier today. So you blew up, tried to blow up a bunch of people, blew yourself up. And right. the only thing that the people could say about you was he was a recluse. No one knew him. But your last words to one of the neighbors was, I'm going to be famous. And I'm going to be, my name's going to be famous. Well, no one knew anything about you. Yeah, let's not right. look like that. Yeah. <laughs> let's, right. let's, let's have a right. story to tell, a positive one right. on top of that. Exactly. Yeah. So what should we expect from Lay Soul in 2021? Uh, lots of poetry, lots of creative mm -hmm. growth, lots of flowetry, lots of vibes, fashion, healing, and just like good energy. 
Lots of good energy. Yeah, lots of positive energy. You bring yeah. the best to Denver. I'm glad that you're here. May you spread I'm glad it. I'm oh, here. let me sprinkle a little. Can we just do this with the universe real quick? So a lot of lay soul all over Parker. You guys need help. I, I walk in the store and I'm the only black and you guys don't know how to handle that. Um, a lot of lay soul over Littleton. Uh, a lot of lay soul over Greenwood Village and Green Valley Ranch. And yeah, let's just push you all over. They need to speak yeah, to me. For real. They need to know you. They need to know your vibe and they are going to yeah. learn a lot from you. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to hit every community. So I get to meet a lot of people that aren't comfortable with us. Uh, they haven't oh, even taught the baby I, I girl how to not stare. The kids will look at you like, and I'm like, I'm just a that. black person. I'm just a black person. Right. Yeah. But it's so interesting to me because like, you know, I, I like, I, <laughs> it's, yeah, I it's, 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 it's a little, it's, it's a little asshole, a little assholey, but I love, I love when a racist asks me some like really ignorant racist shit. Cause I do too. I get something out I of that. <laughs> to me you know what i'm he saying so they're trying tell to me learn how you are and they're yeah. not even trying to be racist to me directly it's just like yeah. the ignorance is showing and my power yeah. is showing so you're trying to educate with my and that's how yeah. i'm looking at it so i'm teaching you right. some shit like i wear these yeah. earrings that, say, that says black mixed with black on them okay. and then okay. i remember okay. meeting this lady because i used to work at the airport but i left denver airport Ooh. because I, I, they were kind of racist yeah. you know D I D I i'm telling you i have DIA is the only airport, and I'll just, I'll, I'm going to let you share your story. I'm sorry. DIA right. is the only airport where I, an American war widow whose soldier died right. in the war for your freedom, will take me through the worst TSA experience, and I do not experience it anywhere else. And I know right. you know that my ID has the highest security clearance after being at the White House. All right. That's off my chest. Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I need to get that off. I feel like they have buttons at the airport, like those buttons that that say like random search, yeah. and, and they just press it for random people. You. you know what I'm saying? Like it's not just <laughs> the detectors randomly ringing off. I really feel like there's like a whole system to like search yeah. people and to like violate people's space, man. So. I feel like yeah. there's a system to come at people of color, but you know me, yeah. I'm always yeah. causing that good trouble. All right, so right. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, so how can the viewers connect with you on social media? And you guys remember when my guests come on, the comments that are made by the host are not always the thoughts of the guests, okay? Because the host can be the most sometimes. All right. Right. So, 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 <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> How to find you on social media? You can find me uh, on my Instagram. I'm always on Instagram, y'all. I'm I'm definitely expanding in 2021, but just stick with my social media now to see what I'm expanding to. But you can find me on Instagram, laysoul r l e s o u l dot art. That's my personal IG. I post very very often. I'm very very interactive, and I share um, forever so live. You can find me on Instagram. Facebook, YouTube, Tidal, Spotify, Love everywhere, it. Forever Soul Live, okay? Love it. The Soul Gallery. That's my Instagram as well as my Etsy page, okay? D A S O U L Gallery. G A L L E R Y. And Love it's it. painting, artworks, clothing, and myself. So definitely connect with me and let's share some space. And I'm going to let her end with some positive thoughts. Um, on what you want to say to the people because this year is the end of the year. This week is the end right. of the year. I'm sorry, this week is the end of the year. So yeah. what can you tell people to do? What should they be working on today, tomorrow, New Year's Eve? What should everyone really be focusing on? Staying grounded. You know what I'm saying? Just stay grounded and everything else will follow suit. Take time and work on your own like path. Work at your own pace. You know what I'm saying? Take your time and, you know, go go with the motions of yourself. Be kind to yourself. You know, everything That's is going to work out. That's it. The, everything yeah. is going to work out. Forever Soul Live. That's the hashtag, right? That's an yes. important hashtag. I want you guys yeah. to follow her. Please come back. Uh, share the links. I will share as many as I can also. 
in the comments and you guys share this everywhere if you're viewing it black and denver group we appreciate you for allowing us to be on the platform please share 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 it's public um and if you need to connect with her she has opened a window for you to do that lay soul thank you for giving us a moment of your time thank you so much for having me no i problem. appreciate you no problem all right, you guys, that's it. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful, I'm trying to keep up with the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, where are we at? It's Tuesday. It's just Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Have a wonderful Tuesday. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're out. All right.